Today, let's make this really nice pop reveal effect. Trust me, this is gonna be really easy. To start with, we'll take this cube and apply a subdivision modifier on it. After that, we'll press X and delete it. Now, add a icosphere to our scene and make the subdivision to 4. Right click, shade smooth. After that, add a plane to our scene. With these two things, we can start working on our effect. So we are going to use geometry node. So let's just divide this panel right here and selecting our plane. We'll switch to geo node editor and click on the new. Well, don't worry about this. This is going to be really easy, like working on lava. So let's just delete this group input and bring in our sphere. We can just drag this sphere from the scene collection now there will be three steps in this let's start with the first step that would be summoning the particles so we have a simple node which is distribute points on faces and we can just connect it after the object info now i will change the density to 1000 for now so it covers our object from everywhere we have the particles we can make them move for that we will use a simulation zone so what we have to do is just disconnect this pipe and connect our simulation output to the output geometry now to get our points back in the simulation we'll just use a join geometry node and bring it here now we can just connect it right here and we have our points but they are not moving so we'll use a node called set position and another node which is store named attribute and we'll need another one i sorry i have to lie but we'll use a named attribute so we'll create a attribute which will be speed so i'll just set it to s and same copy it to the named attribute before i connect it back to the offset i'll just change this float value to vector and i will connect it to the offset right now nothing is happening but if we duplicate this named attribute use a math node which is a vector math connect it right here and then connect it back to the value so with this what i can do is set it to 0 0.001 and all of them will start moving on the y direction as you can see if i set this to for the x as well they will start moving on that axis because that is y and that is x and they're moving on the both so they will go at that direction but uh, what i exactly want is for them to move randomly on random direction so i'll use a random value node right here and change this to vector of course and connect it to this before i play set the value as per my requirement so for this i'll set to 0 0.007 0 0.002 that will be max for both of them and i will set the minimum for this will be 0 0.004 now if we play we will get something like this as you can see they are all going spreading out in random direction this is better than before at least but right now they are all just going straight i don't want them to be straight i want to make them a little bit gay for that we will add another add node right here and i'll use a noise texture and connect this to back again but you can see it's very chaotic what i will do is use a duplicate this add node change this to scale and set this scale to 0 0.01 so as you can see the scale has reduced and next thing i would do is uncheck the normalize as you can see they are now more better than before to make it more better what you can do is change this to 40 and there is a w value if you press hashtag frame divided by 24 you can see some animation going on a little bit more chaotic that is what you would really like to see but now that we have this kind of basic system what i want at the last is i don't want so so many particles i just want it to summon for example at the 30th frame i wanted to summon these particles just for once and then no more particles will be summoned so i will create a switch for that for that i'll use a switch node like this and it, it should be set to geometry now don't connect it to the false you will set it to true why true because we are going to create a switch where we'll use a compare node this compare node should be set to equal why because if we use scene time and connect 
the frame to the A and set the B value to 30 which indicates when as it's connected to the scene time so whenever the value will reach the 30 for the scene time as we have set here 30 it will become true and then this system will distribute points on faces and they will start working only for the 30th frame so if we see the result we should see something like this only for the 30th frame one more thing that i wish to do is these are very powerful right now they are going way fast so i will use another scale node just before all the system we have created so we can reduce down or slow down the speed 0.9 should be better than all this yeah that is better now for the final magic that you saw that puppy effect that is really simple what we are going to do is just go before this distribute points on faces and use a store named attribute right here and i will set the name that we have used here which is the speed and i will just paste it here now to add some value to the speed what we'll do is just connect this normal to this right here or what we can do is simply we don't have to do that we'll just paste it right here and we'll store this normal as a value right here so that we can use it whenever we want anywhere and set it to vector set it to speed which is s and we can just use a named attribute anytime we want which will be our normal weight it should be set to vector but anyway let's just change it to vector and we connect it again right here now this normal is being combined with the speed we created and how should it go it should be very chaotic as you can see so to reduce the own effect of the normal you know what you have to do you have to just duplicate this scale node wait let's duplicate this one it has a lower value so we can just bring it in between and you will see the poppy effect working well that was quite a bit low if we change the value we should get what we want you saw that that poppy effect you can increase it even further by setting the value a little bit higher now one thing that i would love to do is increase the density to 1500 now we can create another very interesting and nice system this is going to be very complicated because as you can see right here these particles pops and then they go through our object as you can see there we are going to create a system for that we'll use a node which is ray cast this node is going to help us a lot for that so i'll connect the original speed to the ray direction then use a length node extract this out use a length and then i will connect it back again inside now we need the target geometry for that we can just bring in again the icosphere right here or you can use another logo for example the monkey ball i have used by the way this is a plugin which is called blender kit and this is available for free monkey golf so what i can do is just bring in the monkey ball and then connect it to the target geometry and set it to relative make sure it is relative now after that how we will define what is going to happen so we'll use a switch right here and we'll set it to vector now if it's hit is hit will connect it to the switch now this switch will define if it's hit it will reflect but how it will reflect for that we'll use a reflect function in the vector math node for and for that we'll connect the hit normal and our original speed and after that we'll connect it to the true but if it is not hit then what else what will happen that false value will be used which is our original speed and it will continue with its original speed and then we can just connect it back to the value and we can see the result just switch around the position of the reflect and that fixed it also let's set up the last thing so what we exactly want is at the 29th frame i'll keyframe our icosphere and at the 30th frame i will make it disappear by pressing i key you can just insert a keyframe and at 30th frame i'll press s and then press zero and then left click and that will do it and i will press i and it will insert a keyframe and it will make it disappear oh, oh, oh uh, uh, uh. of course i know why there's an issue because for the original object that is using the distribute points on faces you make sure to set it to original 
so that it doesn't affect the particles now let's change this particle into something better so just after the simulation zone i will use a called instance on points after that i will just add a plane in the scene make it smaller move it out and apply the scale make it a bit more smaller now i will just bring in this right here set it to original only and connect this to the instance now our instance look like that but if it look from the front view or maybe if we just add a camera look from the camera move out the camera they all look very flat like that so i will just bring in our camera as well into the scene and then use a not call line rotation to vector i will connect the location to the vector and then rotation to the rotation and connect this back to the rotation and you will see they will be facing our camera so wherever i will move the camera they will look towards it one more thing that we can do to make it even more better we'll use a random value node set it to act then connect this to, to the scale value and now you can see the scale but i don't want this type of scale so i'll just set it to the float connect it to the scale again and you will see so many variation of the object that makes it look even more better now arrives the final part we will apply material to the object to make it look more appealing now the first thing that you gotta make sure is that whatever material we apply on the icosphere we apply the same material on the plane that we have created so what we just do is select our icosphere first create a new texture for it just call it puff and then go to the plane and apply the same material to it as well puff let's go back to the icosphere now what i'm going to do is use a uv map right here and choose the uv map and connect this to a voronoi texture then after that i'll collect the color to the base color and we get something like this so let's just increase the value a little bit after that i will just use another node which is attribute node now here we have to do is we have to apply a random color to each of those planes so we have to get those with this attribute so i'll just copy this uv map and paste it right here set this to the instancer and now we have to connect it to this uv map we have to add it to it so we'll use a math node and connect both together now if we see the result we can see nothing happening on the plane why is that because we have to apply a material just our after the instance on point and select the puff here as well now we see this is the kind of result we are getting and we are not here for this kind of result fix that what we simply have to do is select the plane and then go to the data and here in the uv map just change it to uv map one and enter now as you can see we have separate colors for each of them and they are going to copy the same color as the uv map of the sphere as you can see when they pop up at the 30th frame they have the same green color as it was on the sphere right here you can also limit it to a particular color by using just a color ramp after this one noise texture set your desired color just like you can do it make it black and white only or you can change it to a very nice color like this now you might not want it to be just a square looking or you, maybe you want it to look like that some glitch thing going away so let's just duplicate this uv map and connect a length node to it let's visualize how it looks like it's totally blank it's totally blank because we have to change this uv editor to uv map one as you remember we have changed the uv map for this one so let's also let's go to the edit mode select everything change this to the uv editor and here you can see we have to move this at the center of the cursor and now there's a circle forming at the center after that we'll just use a mix color node and combine a noise texture with it we'll see it use the same uv map to the vector here and check the normalize connected to the color back again and we'll some, see something like this i'll change this mode to linear light then after that use a math node setting it to less than now if we shift this to the left side we can see some result to affect it more we can change this threshold of the less than and you can increase the scale as per your liking you can increase the details as well change it as per your liking make sure at the last you connect it back to the alpha and you will get this kind of result 
and you get this kind of puffy result you can have a bit of more of depth in this how we can create that depth is by using another attribute node as you might remember we have stored the normal data if we go back to the geometry node editor we have stored our normal data which is right here which is normal we can just copy this paste it here connect this vector to the normal and we might see some nice result just wait for it to load and also make sure to change it to the instancer now if you can see if you mute it you will see the depth going away and then depth is coming back it looks way more better now now there are more ways you can make your scene more better so i will change the material of the plane that is put on the background i will make it into a emission now the last thing i would like to make a touch would be to go to the compositor enable the use node check the backdrop click on this icon to get a render and this is the render we got now we'll go back here Control shift left click on this to get something in the background now we can press v to zoom out and then middle mouse button to move it out now the last thing that i want to do is press shift a and here in the filter use the kohara and connect it so it will give you a more of kind of stylized look you can set it to four that would be good enough if you don't want it you can remove it if you want to see it on the real time you can go to the here and change it to always for the compositor it will look something like that it looks amazing after the render view is done of course but without that it looks still amazing so it's all on your personal preference how would you like it to be you can also just remove this that would be all for this tutorial and you got this really nice and amazing pop reveal effect and you can go share it with your friends or whatever you would like to do with it but if you, this tutorial really helped you and really taught you something please do make sure to subscribe and like this video and comment down if you have any queries or you need any help so I will see you in the next one. Uh, see ya.